This men's 1500. Yeah. Ooh. At Europeans. You have Jakob Ingebrigtsen. We were just talking about this still. Neil Gorley coming off the British record. He's sharp right now. What percent chance would you give Gorley to pull the upset? If they were to run this 16 times, Gorley would win four of the times. So 25% chance. Three of the times. Three out of 16. <laughs> Three out of 16. Just less than 25. Just less than 25%. Okay. Explain. Uh, I mean, it's not zero because we've seen that Gorley is entering in the stratosphere of, hey, I may be the best runner in Britain or in the UK. Yeah. And the UK is probably going to have three people in a final. So if yeah. you're the best one of a country that can put three people in the final, you are a medalist contender. And if you're a medalist contender in the 1500, you're a gold medalist contender because the 1500 is not a race where the gold, there's a pure, like, no one's beating me because we thought that was Ingebrigtsen and he lost. Yeah. So if you're a medalist contender, you're a gold medalist contender. And so Gorley is a gold medalist contender going up against Ingebrigtsen. We saw him lose to Whiteman. I look at Gorley as like a, a B plus version of Whiteman right now. Okay. Of, of 2022 Whiteman. Right. 2023 indoor Gorley is B plus version of 2022 outdoor Whiteman. At Worlds or just Whiteman's whole outdoor season? Whiteman's whole outdoor season. Okay. And with that, you know, there's a chance. Mm -hmm. If he was a B minus version of the, then it wouldn't work. I, this is working. I'm trying to explain it, what's going on in my head right now, mm -hmm. into words out into the podcast world. But what I'm trying to say is 25% chance. Yeah. Obviously, Ingerbritson's the, the heavy favorite. Yeah. Ingerbritson, he's only run once or twice. He's run twice. Once. Once. Levin. Yeah. Once in Levin. He was apparently sick going into that race, right? His preparation was abbreviated because of the sickness. I don't think he was sick then, but they okay. said he had missed some stuff coming forward. You know. I think it's going to be a reason. There's going to be a reason to watch because there is a chance he's going to lose. Yeah. I don't think Ingebrigtsen's going to lose. I think he's still going to win easily. Yeah. But there's going to be a reason to watch. It's not like if if Gorley wasn't in this race, there's no reason to watch the event because you'd be like, Ingebrigtsen's going to win easily. There'd be no drama at all. No drama. There's drama. If you listed this all. This is like TNT. They know drama. If you listed all the people this, just this indoor season who you'd want to see match up with Ingebrigtsen just based on indoor results, I think number one would be Nagus. Yep. And then I think two would after last weekend would probably be yeah. Gorley. It was Kerr, but now you'd probably Gorley say, took over Kerr. Yeah, because you want to see the best race. Yeah, and and I think Gorley would give him the best race. Ingebrigtsen's also entered in the three thousand. Um, looking at the seeds here, Sam Parson the top seed with a seven thirty nine. Then Robin Hendricks in there. But Jakob is the big favorite. This comes on the last day. So he'll have the 1,500 in his legs, but I think if he gets to the 1,500, okay, he'll be yeah, fine with 3,000. Yeah, I mean, this is the field where you're like, all right, this is no drama race. There's a no drama here. He's going to win Michelle easily. is in there, Almgren. There's some names, guys on the circuit, but there's not anybody who's having the gorly like yeah. season that you think could pose a threat to him. And If, if, if Katir was in that race, then it would be a little different. Yes, yes, he'd be one that we'd want to see here too. But also, 1,500 indoors a little bit more of a yeah. chance at a random result for Ingebrigtsen.